Right, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back to another reaction. Today, we got how we could build a moon base today. Space colonization one. Super interested to find out how we're going to build a moon base and stuff and how cool it will be. Right, space video, moon base. Let's get it, man. Humans dream about leaving Earth and traveling through the galaxy. But we were born too early to be part of it. Or were we? The reality is, we could of course begin not. our dream by building a moon Of course not. Today. We got Elon Musk, man. We actually do have the technology, and current estimates from NASA and the private sector say it could be done for 20 to 40 billion dollars spread out over about a decade. Holy shit. The price is comparable to the International Space Station or the budget surplus of Germany in 2017. Not that big an investment, really. The payoff it's something we have to do, though. The moon is a sandbox to develop new technologies and exploit unlimited resources. It would start a new space race and lay the foundation for us to spread out into the solar system and beyond. Now, when you think about it, we have to we have to go in baby steps to begin with, right? So first, let's colonize the moon, right? Let's let's make have moon bases. Then we go on to Mars, and then etc. etc. We just keep going. We just keep going until the whole universe is ours, man. Or until like we bump into another alien race, and then uh, Star Wars is happening, or Star Trek is happening, and uh, it's just star fights, right? But you know, until then, uh, yeah, let's just colonize some stuff, man. <laughs> create a vast until then, array let's of just take over some planets. Benefit us on Earth, and we would all be part of it. So That'd be so why cool. Why are we doing it? Well, sadly, it's hard to get governments interested in long-term investments in the future of humanity. Let's imagine just doing it. If we start today, how would we build a moon base? It's because there's no, like, benefits to them, man. Like, stop thinking about your, your benefits, bro. And start thinking about, like, what do you want to be in the history books for, right? Is there not a president or, or, or prime minister or someone a part of a country that wants to put their foot down and be a part of history, bro? Like... The, the, the country or the person that is in charge of the country or the person in charge of literally putting a moon base on moon you're literally starting out you know colon um i don't even know what the word is you, you're starting the process of colonizing the universe right you're gonna go down in history right as that guy stop thinking about like what's gonna benefit you to be fair that does benefit you surely you want to be in the history book but the president lewis grant Throughout history, he made sure that his country put a base on moon, and from that day forward, they then colonized the whole entire universe. Right? Listen, just make me, make me president. Colonization happened in phases. I got you, man. In the first phase of the age of exploration of the new world, for example, European monarchs funded expeditions to chart and discover and to stake their claims. They planted a flag and set up a camp, but they didn't stay. I tell you what's crazy though. You know, if there was like you know a crazy amount of diamonds or just material or oil on the moon right would all would, th th bro there would be a fucking city on the moon there would legit be a city on the moon in the bro. second phase small missions set up outposts and settlements were founded which were still very dependent on their home countries for supplies some failed but others survived and established a permanent presence only then, in the third phase, did a true colony form to which tradesmen and labourers could emigrate, creating new wealth and opportunities for themselves and their families, sending extreme wealth back to their countries of origin. Yep. When we colonise the moon, we'll go through the same three phases. This time, without murdering billions of innocent people in the process. Unless, you know, under the moon, in, in moon caves, there's actually people. There's actually aliens, imagine. The moon is not a welcoming place for living <laughs> things. A moon day lasts 29 Earth days, with a difference of nearly 300 degrees Celsius between sunlight and shade. Oh, shit. There's no atmosphere to shield us from meteorites, big and small, or cosmic radiation. Worse still, the lunar surface is covered in a layer of nasty, jagged dust. The moon is hard, but we're good at doing hard things. In the first phase of lunar colonization, our explorers proved it can be done, that a new world can be reached. This phase started 60 years ago with the Apollo missions. Since then, satellites like the American Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter have mapped the moon, while rovers like the Chinese U-2 have studied the composition of the lunar surface, looking for water ice and metals. Phase one is more or less complete. We know what we need to know to enter phase two. 
in the second phase, astronauts will build the first. Yeah, I feel like we've stood in the moon too much now. Like we, we just need to go there, bro. We just need to make a base. And this could begin today. The first small moon base could be completed in a decade. The first nation that establishes this base will be akin to the first nations building outposts in the New World 500 years ago. Bro, that's it's what I'm saying. To send rockets to the moon, so you will literally be down in as history as possible. The base will be light, little more than inflatable habitats for crews of no more than 12, and will be deployed somewhere with a natural shelter. Options include caves, like underground lava tube tunnels, or craters near the poles, where the days are six months long. These astronauts will not stay long. The habitat is likely to be abandoned between missions, as solar panels cannot generate electricity during the lunar night. But they'll do the groundwork to enable humans to stay permanently. Our first crew will consist of scientists and engineers who will study the composition of the moon and whose experiments will explore ways of using the available lunar material, say, purifying lunar ice and turning it into water for human use. And water is important cool. for far more than drinking. They can use it to experiment with growing plants for food. Hydrogen fuel cells will store power through the long night, extending astronaut stays. And most importantly, it can be split into hydrogen and oxygen, rocket fuel. By harvesting water from the moon and putting it into orbit, the moon base will supply an orbital depot where scientific missions to Mars and the outer solar system can refuel. That's cool Compared as hell. Compared to the Earth, it's much easier and cheaper to get things off the moon into orbit. Colonizing Mars may mean starting from the moon. But this isn't a true colony, not yet. The base will be abandoned if funding stops. If we want our base to grow into the third phase, into a true colony, it must become self-sufficient, supporting itself via exports to Earth. Now, yeah, it basically needs to find someone on the moon that can, you know, take back to Earth to, you know, make make money really. Arrive, looking to get rich off lunar resources and support services. If it's cheaper to produce rocket fuel in space, what else can they get rich on? They could extract precious metals, abundant in impact craters and other raw materials from the lunar regolith. One promising possibility is the mining of helium-3, an isotope that could one day be used in nuclear fusion reactors, something the Chinese lunar exploration program is currently looking into. Oh, shit. Future colonists may export helium-3 back to Earth, providing us with cheap and clean fusion energy. What would happen? Right, listen, right? We live in a world where, unfortunately, everyone's against everyone, right? It's not just Earth colonized in the moon. It will be a country. So let's say the Chinese landed on the moon, made it, you know, colonized the moon. Is the moon then Chinese? Would they own the moon? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, what will happen there, right? That's actually mad to think about, isn't it? Asteroids could be pulled into the moon's orbit and mined. With commercial exports to Earth, the colony is fully in its third phase, self-sufficient and economically productive. Then again, the moon's that big. America will just go to a different part and then colonize that. And then like they'll have sections and they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll do shit like that, won't they? Our base will begin using lunar material in its Our only problem is if like somebody like fucking Russia colonizing it, they're saying, nah, bro, the moon is ass. You, you put any ship near the moon, we're shooting you down. And then welcome to Star Wars, bro. <laughs> projects, if it's to welcome to fucking growing. Star Wars. Fortunately, lunar soil has all the necessary ingredients to make concrete. Robotic mining rigs can sift the lunar dust for organic molecules and could be used to build huge structures way too massive to be brought from Earth, while advances in 3D printing will make it possible to produce almost everything else the crews need. Wow. So it's cool. hard to say when exactly the colony becomes self-sustaining. Growth is gradual, experiments are replaced by industry, and the population steadily reaches the hundreds, encompassing more than just scientists. Engineers, pilots, and contractors representing countries and corporations will be present. Two of these people will make a breakthrough. Not scientific, but social. They will have the uh, first extraterrestrial child. Oh my god, Joe, how, how would that be born? 
on the like the conditions on like moon and stuff like you know with the less gravity bro what do you history that'd be the weird birth of the first child was celebrated as a moment where the seed of a colony finally and irreversibly took root bro imagine being that kid yo where are you from the moon no 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 like where are you from bro like obviously he wasn't from the moon no on the moon bro i was born on the moon what the fuck <laughs> Here, it means that the moon is not just a place for scientists and engineers to work, it's a place for people to live, to raise a family. Crazy. Once this transition happens, the colony grows rapidly, building more habitats and schools and farms and all the things needed to support the growing population. Holy shit, this As is so dope. As our colony grows, all kinds of new technologies will be invented to sustain it. They might develop crops that efficiently recycle carbon dioxide or that grow with very little water. This is so cool, man. They might man. find ways to recycle and reuse 100% of their waste, technologies that are extremely valuable for Earth. They could even build the first space elevator in the solar system. With huh? a space elevator, spacecraft, huh? astronauts, and raw materials could be brought back and forth from lunar orbit without needing to use rockets at all. Huh? The moon may become a hub for economic activity on a scale that's hard to imagine right now. It's hard to say who will own the colony at this point. Will the first person born on the moon take the national identity of their parents, or will a new generation meld together into a new lunar society? Yo, and this is so cool! Treaties that bar any nation from owning the moon are inevitably rewritten, will the colonists be given a say? Will they declare independence from the Earth? However, we are the moon people. <laughs> where it happens, the moon is a perfect sandbox to learn how to colonize the solar system, the perfect project to unify nations, and the only way to guarantee our survival as a species should yep. something tragic happen on Earth. Yeah. If we ever want to colonize the Milky Way, we'll have to start somewhere. So why not start there? Baby steps. Why not start now? Bro, we need to do it, man. That well, is so I'm fucking cool. Really, really dope video from Kurz. Absolutely love these videos. If you guys got any videos like this that you want me to watch, then link them down in the comment section below. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy this as much as I did. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Make sure you guys subscribe. We're getting super close to 1,000 subscribers, which is super dope. So I appreciate you guys that are subbing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.